All right. Welcome back to the Barebow Project. I am doing another form evaluation. Now this time, I don't know if it's so much a form evaluation as it is a form comparison. Um, quite some time ago, oh man, it might be going on two years. I did a video analysis with Paul Helms. Um, if you are familiar with Paul, if you're familiar with Barabo, you probably know in some ways or have seen Paul's post. He uh, shoots a lot of the online stuff, um, does quite a bit of live feeds, mostly in the push listeners group. Um, he has shot the Barabo Project tournaments now and again. He shoots as a traditional archery society circuit and the IBO stuff mostly. Um, you know, but it, the dude's a hard worker and and he puts the time in and and Although I don't typically admit it in public, he's, yeah, yeah, he's an overall nice guy. Um, you know, but I had, I did, I did this, this video analysis and some irony to it. because so I don't, I, Paul didn't watch it. Um, and we're going to look at what Paul sent me, um, talk about some of the things that, that we had seen. And, and then we're going to look at his videos he just sent. Um, and just to show, because Paul has improved tremendously improved tremendously over the years um he's refined his form he's made you know quite a few changes and we'll talk about some of the changes that he made some of the interactions that we've had um and, and we'll go from there so um i'm gonna play and, I, and here's a here's a prime example of what we see in bearable all the time significant overdraw paul used to be guilty of this significant overdraw and what I do is I'm talking about coming in the anchor where he draws super, super far and saying like, listen, when you draw, draw to load um, from setup to draw to load, I would not draw past and what I was saying in the video is past this position. This is where you're drawing back and then coming straight into anchor. Um, you know, you should be what they call escalator or escalate into like an escalator kind of like dude, into anchor from like the front of the chin um you know in nts the draw to load is a little bit lower down here almost into like the bottom of the neck like almost like as if your pinky and your thumb are in the bottom of your neck and then boom up um you know and that's a direct instruction that i got from guy kruger uh, the assistant uh, uh, coach for um, the United States archery team. So, you know, in Barbo, the application for that is, well, I mean, at least draw to the front of the chin into draw to load and then up into your anchor. And what you notice is, you know, when you make the, the traditional C of the hand um, as called for in the NTS, again, if we're, pursuing nts that's the way i'm describing it I'm not, i advocate often about the nts because i have a knowledge in it i am not telling you to shoot full-blown nts for bare belt. let me just put that out there what i was saying to paul in this video is let's not overdraw by overdrawing you're losing back tension by losing back tension then you have to lose the same amount of back tension every single time to be repeatable so what we're talking about here is just that is is let's make it repeatable coming in to anchor, not allowing that, that leak of back tension to come forward and get into anchor. The other thing I want, I, I'm going to actually rewind that. I want you to watch right here. So we're coming in, we come forward and I want you to watch the head movement that's coming in this, in this section right here. I'm going to pause it. Stand by. Paul comes back. All right. So I want you to watch. We're going to, so he, you notice he already moved his head a little bit or uh, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace his nose right here. Cause we know that his head is pretty much set where it's supposed to be. Let's watch in this instance, how much head movement happens from this point to the point he settles on his anchor. Look at that. Watch again. Look at how far, just having that visual. 
on where his head is. Look at all that extra movement. So again, I'm not telling you that you're not allowed to move your head at all. I am telling you though, that when it comes to um, trying to be repeatable, getting rid of all of that extra movement is easier to make a repeatable shot than to keep it. Um, again, you can do anything really well if you do it the same way every time. The problem that occurs is that the more things that you do in your shot process, the more times you need to do it to make it repeatable. So if you take all of the extra stuff out of your shot process, for example, all of this, and I'm going to use orange because it, it, it fits the script for Mr. Paul Helms because he's a ginger. You get rid of all of that extra head movement and what happens? Well, we make our shot more repeatable. That, that's all. It's very simple. It's not, it's not a crazy ideology for archery form. It's not being, um, you know, I've been accused of being a form snob and all that stuff. No, it, that's not what it is. It's the idea that if you want to get better and if you want to get better quicker and if you want to follow what's some already researched um, sports science form as per the national training system and really it's just common sense, get rid of all the extra stuff and learn how to get to full draw without doing the extra stuff it's really it's a very simple concept so what we're going to watch through let's let's watch some of this other stuff um i want to move forward a little bit here in this let me see or i'm going to go to his release here so i want you to watch paul's release again this is this is old this is old paul this is not current paul helms um but let's watch his release. Pretty static, actually. Let's watch the, uh, it's his slow motion. I went too far. No, there it goes. So you can see, you know, he's clearly just opening his fingers and letting go of the string, right? Not a whole lot of movement either with, with the elbow. So in reality, there wasn't a lot of back tension happening as well. The hand just comes out, fingers open, hand comes out away from the face. You know, I, I, I know Paul has made some drastic changes. And, and in the video analysis, I'm making mention of that. And, you know, that loss of back tension contributes to that inconsistent release just having the hand come out away from the face as opposed to coming straight back. Um, but, you know, you don't want to add any, um, you don't want to add tension or movement into the release. You want the release to happen just as it applies to the amount of back tension you have in your shot. If you go and you hold your hand here and you allow that string to pull through, your your fingers and, and i'm actually going to stop share here and pin this so you can see it if you are at full draw and you're coming into your anchor you know paul has a pretty high anchor he's probably like closer up up to here middle finger corner mouth type of deal but when you are at full draw you load draw to load anchor and you're at full draw and if you let go and your hand goes anywhere besides straight back um, and goes any more than, I would say no further than like to the back of the jaw. You're adding movement into it. It's unnecessary movement. It's not movement that actually matters. So the problem that occurs is that we need to match the movement on both sides, both the bow hand and the release hand. So if, and I went through this in my one blog, but we talk about draw to load, anchor, aim, point on, expand, 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 boom. Forearm doesn't move, 
this only moves as per the release of the back tension building in expansion and then the release happens you allow the string to pull through your fingers meanwhile maintaining the point on in the middle you're holding tension hold 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 allowing the conscious the subconscious to happen all right so i've hammered on that topic enough um it's probably the most important topic in my opinion when it comes to barebow i'm not gonna lie so we're gonna we're gonna back out of uh of this i'm actually going to switch gears here we're going to look at paul's current videos okay we're going to see if there's some major differences just in those two items all right paul has done a ton of work paul had some heart surgery had some um really worked his butt off to get back and then came back and i think at the taz championship beat uh Dwayne martin which is an accomplishment without a doubt um in their 3d championship you know so that paul is not um not a stranger to hard work and you know and he's open to critique and and criticism and you know he 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 definitely has gotten better. So, well, here's a here's a good video. <laughs> Just because it's funny, we're going to show you the video of Paul setting up his overhead uh, his overhead view. It's good stuff. Let's see. There might be there might be some. I'm going to turn the volume up. Hey, hey, hey puppy. <laughs> well, shameless plug. Let's look at the push hat. You need to step stool because he's just a little guy. Oh, I'm just playing, buddy. Oh, nothing but love for you, Mr. Helms. So, okay. Uh, he's showing us some. Um, we're going to look at alignment. I don't think this video is going to give us. Yep, you're still ugly, Paul. No, I'm just playing. Um, but we're going to look at his overhead view real quick and, and get an idea of where his alignment is. So, raise to draw. So he's in the setup position right here. In reality, the setup at the setup position, you can see that Paul currently has more of a compound back form. Pull my. So look at he's already he's in the setup position. Bow is raised, and we're here. These shoulders are pointing this direction. In the setup position, the barrel of the gun should be complete. Um. What that means is that this, so we're going to pretend this is straight to his arm. This should be a straight shot. That should already be done. The alignment should already done. You set that in the setup. You set the barrel of the gun with the coil and the core engagement. That's what happens. Um, according to NTS, um, again, you don't have to do it. I'm just saying that that is, uh, is, is it. And the reason that we set that barrel of the gun so early is because it ensures that the alignment stays put um, and allows us through coiling to hold more tension in your back. That's it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, does a good job. He definitely does better with the head movement, but you can actually still see um, here, Paul, that we have this more of a compound, not even quite a compound form. We got, you know, and maybe the shirt makes that a little bit complicated, but we have this straight line this way. And then if we were to draw an arrow this way, straight back, you know, we're not really in that archer's wedge like we, we would like. And I think Paul could probably do better. Um, oh, looks like there's a little creepy creep going on there, Mr. Helms. I think there's definitely a little bit, but you know, you, your the release looks pretty good. That's not bad, pal. Not bad at all. Um, considering, oh, that was me saying, Hey, um, he was asking me if I watched the video. I was like, No, I didn't. I, uh, I unfortunately was, uh, was in the middle of coaching practice at the moment. I don't know what just happened there. Let's try this again. All right, and now we're on what be coaching position number one. Got the videos figured out. 
Look at that pretty bow, Paul. Look at that CD. I'm assuming it's a 27 or a 29. It's a pretty looking bow. So this is that position that we looked at from overhead. Um, in order to get into that position, he would have to, from the set position, so actually I'm gonna go back to the set position here. So from the set position, he needs to let this elbow come down alongside of his belly and then come straight up. So we're not out here, we're here. And it comes straight up, straight up. Um, staying as close to the body as possible in line with or inside the arrow the, in order to do that it's the hinging motion in in the show watch my shoulders right now so it's going from this to in the setup position this being straight so from this set up this so you're 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 pivoting your shoulders to in line with the bow arm and the front shoulder this elbow being out like this makes that nearly impossible. Here, it's got to be here so that when you raise, they come straight up together in the same plane. And what, end, what ends up happening is as this comes straight up, you end up somewhere near around the front shoulder in your pre-draw. So let's look at that again. Let's watch them. Yeah, definitely. I would, I, if you put a little bit of pre, more pre draw into this, it doesn't have to be a ton. Just it allow that allows for this elbow to then come behind the arrow or inside the arrow and allows that shoulder to set back and allow you to create that straight line that we look for from the wrist to the back elbow. Let's watch it again. Such, such a better. Now, isn't that so much more smooth than that, that video from like two years ago? Um, I will say though, let's, let's look at that again. There's probably still a little tiny bit of overdraw, not the end of the world. So you see how he's drawing in this position, his head's probably absolutely perfect. And he's drawing out away from his face instead of straight back. That's not angular, that's not NTS. Not, again, he's not looking for that but it's also doesn't promote getting 100% into your back as per the way the NTS is described and researched and documented. So, you know, in order to do that, you need to set that alignment earlier on um, and draw straight. So what it's going to ultimately look like is that hand's gonna be right, you know, right. Let's say we're just gonna go for a point of reference to the front shoulder. That's gonna be a straight, to just below the chin and then up into anchor from here instead of from way out here and coming into the side, which that's the way compound shooters do it. I know, I know Paul messes around with a little bit of compound, but think about it with compound, our draw to load is different because we have a seven inch brace height. So when we raise, we draw to load and it stops against the wall. It stops at full draw where our anchor point is. And then we come over to our face. That's not the same in recurve. We aren't drawing back and then coming over to our face. We're setting the, the barrel of the gun, draw to load into anchor. It's actually a linear movement of the hand from setup through draw to load into anchor. That's linear. It's a straight movement. It might be angled a little bit, but it's not angular um at all let's watch this watch this again beautiful form though you finished that shot well bud i'm gonna watch that again so but i still am i still don't think you're fully into your back as much as you could be um but you're shooting well. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not saying otherwise you do a good job. I don't see any, I don't know if you're shooting any kind of, if you're shooting a triggerless shot right now. I actually don't know that. I can't see it in this, in this video. Um, if, if you're creating, it looks like you have um, a pretty relaxed hand, but that those thumb, that thumb does seem like it is super tight against the side of the riser. I would play around and double check because although the thumb is faced what would be toward the target. And that's, again, that's, that's a recommended thing. You know, it's faced toward the target. I can't tell 
if there's tension happening in that hand. Um, again, target panic loves negative tension. You know, what are some of the things that we see in negative tension? Just because, you know, Paul's so glamorous, and pretty, we're going to use him as an example. Tension's created in the back of the hand, the bow hand, not shooting a straight elbow, shoulder coming up, um, this shoulder coming up. Like if we draw short and the elbow comes up like this way, you know, really, really high. There's a couple of ways that we can, we can um, erroneously create extra tension in our shot. Paul does a great job of keeping his shoulders down low and level on both sides. Um, hook doesn't look too bad. I'd have to see it close up. He does look like he's got a real hard anchor in the side of his face that can produce lefts and rights. If you have like an overly hard anchor every single time, you don't, again, it's, it's, it's actually a concept that's, it's adopted from Olympic and especially compound. You know, if you're anchoring a real hard into the side of your face and you have a lot of facial pressure onto the string, you'll produce as a right-handed shooter, you'll produce left-handed shots. Um, especially when tension is high, especially when moments of high personal value come, you know, we have a tendency to, to anchor harder and do things that create left-hand shots with a compound, but that left shot could be instead of a center X, you know, a left edge 10, nine, nine o'clock, nine. Well, in Barabo, that arrow is a seven or an eight, or I'm sorry, well, more so a seven or a six or a five, you know, left if we have inconsistent facial um, contact with our anchor and we're constantly anchoring real, real hard. Um, again, I'm, I'm not saying Paul's doing that. I think it looks like he's got some, but I can't see it. It's a video, you know, um, I'd have to work with him one-on-one -on -one to, to see that. But I mean, Paul's a good shooter. I'm not, th th he volunteered this and I wanted, he, I, I'm glad he did. Cause I wanted to compare the major differences from his, um, previous form to what it is now i also want to call attention to his tension and direction he doesn't have this big flashy release it's it's actually not at all it's it's a calm just sort of breaks finishes somewhere where did i say you know right right around the corner of the jaw bow arm dot doesn't move um bow shoots straight forward there's no explosion there's no sit motion there's none of that stuff that happens in olympic recurve it's pretty simple and it shows dude it shows in your performance over the last year the work has that you've been putting in is, is going in the right direction so good stuff let's see what the next position is looks like we have a little bit of some straight on action here so let's see let's oh yes this will be a good a good look at his bow hand let's take a look so we got um we got a real good 45 degree um, you know, that front finger on the riser is usually an indicator of a good grip position. I'm still suspect to think that he's putting a little bit of pressure here. Small potatoes, not a big deal in the yard. Big deal when you learn to make sure that that's, there's no tension there. I think, um, I think all in all, I mean, this is almost a textbook recurve archery grip. Um, just make sure that you don't have a huge clench going on in these fingers either um because again in the compound world in the recurve world creating tension anywhere in here this is negative tension target panic loves it and then when it changes your response to target panic changes your goal is to have make this as repeatable as possible the best way to make it repeatable is to get rid of all of it so let's watch a little bit of head movement there. This, 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 uh, this angle shows the head movement better. It's the important. So when you're watching people shoot on video, you got to see multiple angles. So I want you to watch the amount of head movement here as he comes into anchor, watch the head move to the hand, as opposed to the hand move to the anchor right there. See it? That's a pretty good, um, all in all, it's not, it's definitely not horrible. It's, it's, it, you got some good stuff going on, dude. Um, I love your hook. Your hook looks outstanding. Let's see what happens with that bow hand.
A little shaky shake. It's good. Great bow arm. You've always had a good bow, uh, good bow arm, Paul. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see what this, this is one of his scores. So he, we were messaging back and forth. Well, I'm mean, actually, I'm kind of glad I'm, I'm coming across this. You know, you look at the dude, I think it was the practice round. I don't know if it was anything official, you know, but he shot a 278 in practice. That's solid shooting. I mean, that is real solid shooting. If you can repeatedly do that in practice, you're really doing something right. But when the carryover is when we are shooting those scores in practice, and then when we get to a tournament and we are, if we're regularly practicing, you need to be training and shooting accordingly. If you are shooting those scores in practice and then you get to just a local tournament or something and you're dropping points over time and you're dropping those points to 260s or whatever, then that's when you start to look at all of these small details that we're talking about here. If you're happy with 260s in a tournament, that's great. But there's no end to the ability for us as, as shooters to improve. And Demer is kind of a prime example of that. You can get to know your form and the, the inefficiencies and the best, the best part of your form and the worst part of your form and then work on that so that that consistency goes up. And when you develop a frame of mind of knowing every single individual step of your shot process, that 278 practice score might go up to 285 and your com competition score might go up to a regular 270, you know, or, or ballpark. You know, it, it's the volume of arrows that you're capable of shooting versus the refinement of your form and the knowledge of your form equals, really equals a proper mental game. Your mental game is associated with your, with your confidence and ability to understand where and when you need to make changes. Um, when you shoot with the confidence and the ability to make those changes, you're really doing something special. You know, yes, being in the tournaments helps. Shooting as many tournaments as possible helps. Um, just having a mantra with bad form is not enough. You need to refine everything. And, and that's, that's what we, that's, that's what, that's what makes you more consistent under pressure. Um, Paul, I want to say thank you um, for submitting your videos. Um, you know, you're, you're an advocate for the sport dude. Um, and, you know, before I, close things out let's watch a, a um let's watch this position i call this position number three position so again shoulders low and level look good right great form let's go not a ton of scapular engagement there dude um, I get, I still think that, and there's no core rotation either. So that's, we, if you watch the previous episode, um, you know, I make mention of this core engagement and, and I think, I don't know if the other camera frame will show it. That's where you're missing the ability to get into that alignment is you, there's not a whole lot of coiling going on. So that coiling, if I was drawing this line around his belly would go, would go like this you know, that, that coil, keeping, tightening the quads, tighten the glutes, tuck the hips, keep the hips as close to over the heels as possible. And then you coil to set that alignment at setup. Then all of a sudden, this is a straight shot. So all this has to do is go here, boom, into your anchor. Um, let's watch that again. You can, yeah, and you can clearly see that he is shoulder drawing. For the most part, Paul's a strong dude, so I'm not surprised about that. No coil whatsoever. None. It's all, there's, there's some scapular engagement, definitely could be more, but it's, it's mostly right here is where he's drawing from. Let's watch that through. There's that little tiny bit of head movement. 
all in all, dude, I'm just gonna say, you're, like your full draw position looks looks real good. Um, and the other another place that you can create negative tension, which I, I'm glad I did end up stopping on this, is right here. In this whole section, you can create negative tension that ultimately affects your target panic. Excessive head movement, excess, excessive movement into the shot, um, closing one eye, you know, shooting with both eyes open, huge advocate for shooting with both eyes open at all costs, whatever you can do. When you, when you shoot, I mean, my scores, when I shot Olympic recurve, I went from like 270 halves to 290 halves um, just with the eye change. And I, at the time, what I would do is uh, use scotch tape because it was clear and, you know, whatever, put scotch tape over, over that edge. And I mean, on my glasses, um, which is why I shoot with glasses all the time now for that reason, but you can create negative tension there. And like I talked about before, now I'm not saying Paul is creating negative tension here, but I am saying that I'm using this as a good example, um, just of where you can, if you're shooting a grip sear um, of some kind, you know, you're creating negative tension. You know, I understand it's a shock control thing. Um, and if you can make it work, run with it. Um, but this is one of the reasons why I always say that I think there's a glass ceiling to how high of a performer you're going to be shooting like a constant grip sear with a big explosive follow through all the time, because that is something that you have to reproduce exactly the same. And it's a lot harder then you uh, realize producing tension in the same amount as opposed to just not producing any at all. And when you learn to get to full draw in the correct way and get into your back as much as possible, the correct way, the tension just sort of leaves the shot process. So Again, and I, Paul does a good, and this is another place where I can say, so here, you know, so let's split this down. I think this is what I think. If I had to put a value on it, I would say that tension and direction going this way for Paul on a scale of one to 10 is probably a, like a, a consistent and just adding a value, not like a, on the amount of tension, just in consistency purposes. I think that he's got like a solid um, with zero being no movement whatsoever of the bow arm and 10 being a crap ton, you know, we'll set it, of bow movement with the bow arm. I would say going this way, he's probably, probably like a three, right? And this way, I'm going to say he's probably like a five. Um, and the reason that that doesn't match is because there's more tension built up in here and not here. I think that this, I'm going to, I'm going to clear that out. I think that if he sets the barrel of the gun earlier, ends up somewhere in here with his free draw and is coming straight back into anchor. I think that this scapula is going to be back further. And I think he's going to have more scapula engagement if he can implement the coil during the setup of the shot process. If I were coaching him, that is what I would be doing. Um, but, you know, again, people shoot good scores with out perfect NTS form. And Paul's a prime example of that. It's where your level of consistency falls. Are you going to shoot for, I'm okay with shooting 260 to 270, or are you, do you want to shoot 280 in a competition? Do you want to refine those, mo those movements so that you can, um, you know, shoot 280s and practice all the time? it's up to you it's in the eye of the beholder you do you do you and nobody's gonna judge you for that um if you want to lean into your shot you know there's a, <laughs> a post the other day and i was asking like why do you lean what's the purpose you know there's some legitimate reasons why trad shooters you know wood bows why they lean and stuff like that hey you do you but there's in my opinion we have a really good system and it, it is a good system 
that defines what we need to do to be more accurate and to be more consistent. So does that system apply to all archery? Absolutely, it does. So if you are content with the results that you get from the current way that you shoot, run with it. If you are not, and you know that there's room for improvement, then you need to start looking at these other things. And Paul has done that. And, and I, you know, like I said, Paul's a great advocate for bare bow. He's a great advocate for working hard and doing stuff. So, you know, I, I, um, he's kind of a prime example of like, if you want to get better, you got to put in the work and you have to be willing to make changes. A, a significant change that Paul made was just his stance. Now he had a good stance, but he shuffled his feet between every arrow. And jokingly, you know, we had some banter back and forth and I was calling him twinkle toes. But Paul, he curbed that, you know, and he was like, it's hard, Frank. He's like, it's hard. My attention span just doesn't, you know, I'm, I've been doing it that way for so long, but he curbed that. And I'm hoping he still is curbing it because it, 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 that, as a matter of fact, I think that that score that he had sent me was after he stopped dancing around on the shooting line every time he put an arrow in the butt. Um, if I remember correctly, could be wrong, but I'm sure Paul will, uh, will correct me if I'm, if I'm not. And he shot that 278 practice score. Listen, do I, do you, should you be dancing around on the shooting line? No, definitely not. Especially with people standing on either side, but not, not to mention, then you've got to repeat so many more steps and you're just wasting time on a three minute or a two and a half minute shot clock. Um, talking about the indoor game at it. So you know, there's a couple of things for you to look at, but Paul, thanks again uh, for submitting your videos and being vulnerable uh, with it. Um, you know, it's, um, it's nice to see those changes from comparing Paul from two years ago to Paul now, and your, your, your improvements are, are notable. So, you know, um, kudos to you, man. And, you know, it, thank you everyone for watching. This is a new format. Um, I just, I think we can help more people by making note of these things and putting that stuff out there. So I appreciate if you guys um, in the comments, tell me if any of this stuff resounded with you, if something stuck out, something that you've experienced, if, if it helps you, please, um, you know, comment on our YouTube page. For those of you who listen to the audio version, you know, you're probably going to end up going to watch the YouTube page, but you know, the evaluation of Paul's form from then till now, is a good example of how long it took him to get to the ability to hit those high 270s in practice, um, probably on a more regular basis, and then how those refinements in the shot process changed over that time and what it resulted in. Um, it's 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 it is literally classic target archery. You got to make changes if you want to improve, and you have to be the right changes, focusing on the right things. Form first without a doubt form first strength is in there mental process if you don't have efficient form you you can you can shoot well it's going to take you longer and you're gonna to have to practice a lot more bottom line all right thank you everyone for watching this uh version of the form evals for the variable project thank you to our sponsors this episode was brought to you by yo star true products thank you to our other sponsors xs wings Arizona Archery Enterprises, uh, AAE, um, Yager Archery Products, and uh, our new sponsor, One More Arrow. Check out uh, Martino Galante. He's a, he's, a, he's a compound guy, but he loves all of archery and uh, big bow hunter. Uh, he's just a, you know, and just, a, just an overall good guy. So go check out uh, One More Arrow as well. That's it, folks. Peace out.